Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. and I make videos all about making and selling candles. If you would like to support the channel in a new way, I do now have a channel membership that you can join by clicking on the join button right next to the subscribe button. But today's video is going to be all about hot throw and answering the age old question, how do you get a better hot throw? Now, I do need to preface this video because as you guys know, I'm not an expert in all of this. I'm only an expert in my own experience and what I have personally done myself in my candle making journey. So the purpose of this video is just to kind of get you thinking about a bunch of different possibilities on what could be affecting your hot throw. So I'm gonna be listing a couple different tips for you guys to hopefully put it into your own testing and think about things maybe a little bit differently that you weren't doing before. And that is really the ultimate goal of this video is just to share my experience on what has affected my hot throw and what has made it stronger or weaker before, and also to throw in a couple more tips to get you thinking about things that could be affecting it during your testing. So the first thing I want you guys to think of is the kind of wax that you are working with. If you are working with 100% soy wax, know going into it that it is going to take a little bit longer to get that stronger hot throw that you are looking for, and you may never end up getting the kind of hot throw that you are looking for with specifically 100% soy wax. And that's just due to the nature of the wax. Um, it's kind of known that soy wax kind of has a harder time with a hot throw versus paraffin wax throws really well. And again, this is all based on experience of everybody working with the different kind of waxes because I've had many people re reach out to me before that are having issues with their hot throw with their paraffin wax or parasoy wax. And um, it really just depends on the experience that you are going through. But know going into it that there are some waxes that have a tougher time getting that hot throw. But I do want to throw in a couple tips that might help you if you are still looking to work with a wax like 464 that's 100% soy. Another part of the candle making process is the fragrance oil. So making sure that you are choosing a fragrance oil percentage that is right for the kind of wax that you are working with. So make sure that if you are confused at all about how much fragrance oil to be adding to your wax, that you look up the wax that you are working with and look up the max fragrance oil percentage load. So most of the time this is between 10 and 12%, but it can vary depending on the wax that you are working with. And that will give you a guideline in your head on how much fragrance oil to be adding to your candle. Now, a lot of times as candle makers, especially in the beginning, if we are wanting to get a really strong hot throw, we automatically think to add as much fragrance oil as possible, if not push the limits a little bit, or just kind of wing it and toss in fragrance oil and mix the wax in and hope that it's going to create a good performing candle. But I promise you guys that if you take a moment to kind of understand the process of the ratio of fragrance oil and wax needed, it is going to make it so much easier in the long run. And you're going to make sure that the kind of fragrance oil that you are choosing, the percentage that you want, is actually the percentage that you are adding to the candle. If you guys are confused about that or you don't know how to go about that, I do have an entire it's kind of like a math lesson. It's, it's very uh, helpful for us candle makers. I'm not good at math. I've never liked math, but uh, I think it's really important for us to understand this process. Um, there are apps out there, so I know that a lot of people would prefer to just type it in and have you know the answer right there, and that's totally fine. Um, but I do think that there is kind of value in understanding the process as well. So definitely check it out for you guys uh, to understand a little bit during the testing process to make sure that you are actually adding in the percentage that you think you're adding in and you're not adding too much. And that's just because adding too little fragrance oil or adding too much fragrance oil can also affect the hot throw. So if you're only adding about four or five, six percent, most of the time that can be a weaker hot throw. But if you're trying to add, let's say 13, 14, 15 percent, that can also uh, clog the, the wick and have it not be a good performing candle. It can also be a little bit dangerous for the fragrance oil to seep out on top and the flame to catch a hold of that and actually cause a fire in your candle. 
I also highly recommend during your testing process to choose one fragrance oil to test with the entire time that you're trying to find the right combination of wick and wax in the jar that you have chosen. And that's simply just because you are keeping that one variable constant throughout the testing process. For me personally, my testing fragrance oil is mango and coconut milk from Candle Science. I love it. Not only do I love the scent, I know that it's a strong fragrance oil. So if I get a weak fragrance oil throw from that scent, I know that the combination is not right. So I hope that helps you guys out. If you wanna use that uh, scent as a tester, go for it. Um, it's just the one that I personally love the most. The next thing you need to think about is the wick that you are working with. So I'm going to be specifically talking about cotton wicks. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about wood wicks, but I believe the same principles apply when it comes to testing out the wicks. So what I have learned throughout this process is that if you choose a wick or wicks, if you are double wicking like I do, I double wick all of my vessels. And um, I have learned that if the ratio of the melt point of the wax and the wicks do not go hand in hand, I am not going to get a good performing candle. So what that means is that if the wicks are burning too cool for the wax, meaning that it could have lower flames or it could possibly tunnel, it's not going to create a very good hot throw because the wicks are burning too cool for the melt point of that wax with the diameter of the jar. So I know it starts to get a little bit more complicated at this point, but essentially the diameter of the jar, the wicks, the fragrance oil, and the wax all perform together. It's a, as Kevin from Armitage Candle Company puts it, it's a candle system that all works together. And something else that I actually learned in his hot throw video that I will have linked above, because. You guys need to watch that. All of his videos, it's very scientific. I learn a lot through the process and it kind of clicks in my head and helps me understand. But essentially he put it this way that the melt pool is really what causes the hot throw. Because if you think about it, a wax melt on a tart warmer, a wax melter, it doesn't have a flame, there's no wick, but yet you still get that wonderful hot throw. So that just means that the, the wick, adding the wick in just kind of adds another element of a uh, crazier testing process. It makes it a little, a little bit more complicated because you wanna find the right wick that brings that melt pool to the right temperature so that it's able to disperse into the air. So if it's too cool or if it's way too hot, it doesn't work as properly. So that's why finding the proper wick for your candle is really important because it affects that melt pool and how well it's able to disperse the fragrance oil into the air. And that's honestly why I prefer to double wick. I know, again, it's kind of one of those things that people are very cautious of double wicking. You have to be very careful with it when you are double wicking and it can sometimes be a little bit more of a hassle with trying to get the right wax, the right kind of wicks in the diameter that you are working with. But in my experience of testing before with one wick in the Cali jars, which is 3.25 inches, I was not able to find something that gave nearly the amount of hot throw that my double wicks give that bring up the melt point to apparently a good temperature and enough to where it is a controlled flame. It's not too hot, it's not too cool. And trust me, I have tried so many different things. I've made candles before to where it was burning too cool and there really wasn't a good hot throw because it didn't bring up the melt point enough to disperse into the air. So that was an issue that I was trying to understand and I realized that I was trying to make sure that I wasn't having my candles burn too hot, but I went too far in the other direction to where it was burning too cool now. So it really is a happy medium with candle making. You're trying to understand the process and you're trying to get the right wick series to work with the kind of wax that you're working with. And I think a lot of times when people think hot throw, they immediately think I need to add more fragrance oil. But most of the time, I don't think that that's necessarily the answer. Um, I know that in the past working with my wax, there have been certain fragrance oils that the fragrance oil itself is just much, much, much weaker. And it's not the candle system that I have going on with my candle. It's the actual fragrance oil. So that's why I recommend to any beginner 
beginner to use a fragrance oil that is known to be a strong one, like mango and coconut milk, so that you are able to know that it's not the fragrance oil, it's not the kind of fragrance oil, it can be something else within the testing process that you can adjust. Something else you need to consider is the place that you're testing your candles in. So are you testing it in a larger space, in a smaller space? What's the diameter of your candle and how is that going to affect the space that it's in? So a lot of times I wouldn't necessarily uh, expect a small candle with a small diameter to fill up an entire living room. Um, that just, to me, it doesn't seem very logical, but for it to be a candle for a bathroom or even a small bedroom, that is a little bit more realistic in the sense of testing. So if you are thinking about testing, look at the candle that you are working with and ask yourself, am I really expecting this candle to fill up a really large space or am I just going to get disappointed if I try to test it in that area and you can't really smell it because it doesn't have the walls that are close by to bounce off of or whatever the scientific thing is about hot throw. And you may have to move it to another area. So I always test everything in my bathroom and that's how I can really tell what the hot throw is. I can tell if I start to smell it coming out into the hallway. I've actually smelled it coming into my living room when it's in the bathroom because of how strong it is. So it really just depends on uh, all of the different factors that I've mentioned before, but you really have to kind of think about it in a logical way of what can this candle actually do and what is this candle made for? And then on the flip side to that, if you're working with a vessel that should be able to fill up a larger room, like let's say this candle right here. So this is the Monaco vessel from 1617. The diameter of this is about four inches and the height is about three and a half inches. So the diameter is actually larger than the height. So this tells me that this should be performing really, really, really strong. So you can triple wick this and really get this to the point where it it can fill up a larger room. So something like this, I would test in a larger area. You of course can test in a smaller area, but I would move it to a larger area because the kind of customers that are going to be buying something like this are going to want to put it in their kitchen, on their dining room table, and have it be able to fill a larger space because of how large it is. So these are all of my tips that I can think of when it comes to hot throw and what I have learned along the way from both experience as well as other experienced candle makers. Um, again, Kevin from Armitage Candle Company, Jeff Stanley from Stanley Handcrafted. I've learned a lot from other candle makers as well, as I'm sure you guys do watching other people's videos and you know, people will gain different things from their personal experience, just like you'll gain other things from your personal experience that works for you. But but I really, really hope these tips help you guys out during your testing process and your candle making journey. Hang in there, it gets better, I promise. Um, if you guys liked today's video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.